Holy shit, Thrawn is gonna be at E3, woo! Hello there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jared the Bear. And as you saw in my intro, E3 is two days away and For Honor is gonna be there. So I thought I'd make a little speculation video, kind of speculating on what they're gonna have at E3, you know, just to have a bit of fun with it. And I've got a couple things that I think they might introduce. But, you know, disclaimer, this is all speculation. I have no idea what they're gonna do for E3. I do hope it's something cool though. I hope it's something awesome, something big. All right, here we go. The first thing that comes off the top of my head is pretty basic. So new content is what keeps this game alive, right? And new heroes and buffs and reworks is what everyone gets excited for. I just got the beat. So right off the tops of our heads, we can kind of speculate that For Honor's E3 2019 appearance is going to be an announcement of four new heroes for year four. Honestly, I don't find this very likely because they haven't even finished the current year's heroes, so while there will be most likely more heroes added to the game, I don't think we will get any beyond the ones scheduled for this year revealed to us. I'm no game developer, but you know, uh, year 4 heroes are still pretty far out there. They're probably still in the concept phases. So another possibility is that during the For Honor E3 reveal, we could have the addition of another new faction with its own heroes. This kind of ties into the Year 4 heroes speculation. You know, they can kind of pull a marching fire where they introduce, bleh, introduce a new faction and four new heroes all at once. I don't think this is likely at all, even less likely than the Year 4 Heroes reveal thing because the Wu Lin haven't really been fleshed out entirely yet, and adding too many factions to the game seems like it could be tedious both lore and balance wise. Because the Wu Lin aren't even a part of the faction war, they're just kind of there. They're very unique and they're very cool, but you know, they're kind of, they're just kind of there. I mean, they have their own emblem and, you know, each faction's emblem has significance, but the Wulins hasn't really been explained yet. And even though each Wulin character has backstory, it's kind of just like a paragraph or two. So I don't think it's likely that we will get a new faction revealed to us at E3 or anytime soon for that matter. So another possibility, which I really am secretly hoping for, but probably not gonna happen, at least at E3, is an Operation Health style approach to Year 4 in the game, similar to what the Rainbow Six developers did with their game. Something like finishing the current roster of announced heroes and then taking a season or even two to focus on balancing the game and making quality of life changes and bug fixes. Personally, I unfortunately don't think this is the case, as even though the game would benefit hugely from an approach like Rainbow Six's Operation Health, it wouldn't make for a very exciting reveal during For Honor's E3 showcase. Unless you're a really hardcore player, and it's not as likely that an Operation Health style approach would bring in new players either, which is probably one of the constant goals of the For Honor team and their E3 showcase, show off some exciting new content to help hype up current players and draw in new ones. Another possibility would be a story slash lore expansion, and I actually think this may be kind of plausible, because if you remember at the end of the campaign in For Honor, we see Apollyon, quote, die, unquote, but it's never really confirmed that she's dead. There's not really any horrifying fatal blow, like a decapitation or a dismemberment of any kind. And we've seen Apollyon shrug off things that would put normal warriors on their knees, so her death was left slightly open-ended, and it's possible she could return. And on top of that, there hasn't ever been any major lore expansions to the game, and I would think that every now and again the devs talk among themselves about what they thought happened to Apollyon after then, if she actually died, or if she maybe survived and what the various leaders of the factions are up to and how the world may have changed since the events of the campaign. So maybe, just maybe, there will be an announced story or lore expansion for For Honor and its E3 showing, maybe, hopefully. And personally, I hope Apollyon does return because I don't think her character was fleshed out as much as it could have been. She was kind of one-dimensional, but it felt like there were more dimensions to her than just that one dimension. 
Moving on, a year three heroes reveal. Um, this is pretty much like locked in. They're probably going to show off the new Viking hero. It's almost guaranteed, I would say. Um, they might even show off the new Wu Lin hero, which I gotta say, I'm very excited for these two heroes because one, how are you gonna have a Viking faction without someone with a war hammer? Come on. And two, that ultra long sword that the new Wu Lin hero is gonna have seems really cool. I hope they really nail the armor designs on these two. Maybe have the Viking wear some actual armor instead of just leather. And please, goodness, please give the Viking with the war hammer a cape. Oh goodness, the capes in this game are so good, especially the Lawbringers. Give him a Lawbringer caliber cape, please. And maybe don't have the new Wu Lin hero blow our ears out like Tianji every time they do something. Another possibility is new reworks and hero changes. Um, some heroes that come off the top of my head immediately would be Centurion, Warlord, Peacekeeper, maybe Orochi, Aramusha, and Nobushi. Those heroes seem like they're in pretty bad places at the moment, especially Centurion and Peacekeeper and Aramusha, and they could really do with some new reworks, some new moves, especially Peacekeeper. I mean, she's even less viable than Centurion. Centurion's down there. Like, she just needs totally overhaul. Her heavies do like 20 damage. 20 damage on a heavy! That's the lowest I've seen for a heavy in the game. I think that might be the lowest heavy in the game. And they're slower than Centurions, and I'm pretty sure Centurions does 25. Doesn't he have like six or 700 millisecond heavies? I don't know. I just know she's bad. Like, she is horrible. Now, something else that maybe if the planets align and the stars shine at a specific brightness at a specific second of the day, and Ubisoft just throws all their track record to the wind, is a For Honor 2 announcement. And I think this is the most unlikely thing of everything I've mentioned here because Ubisoft is really into their games as a service model right now. They really like to keep games alive for long periods of time and continuously update them. Which I will personally say I'm kind of a fan of. I do like the games as a service model. I don't like the almost rabid monetization, but for Honor's monetization doesn't seem too bad. You can get steel at a pretty good rate in the game. At least, I feel. It's nothing like EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2 loot box ordeal. We may also see a new game mode or modes, some updates to the faction war, maybe some new breach maps, please, some new breach maps. Or they might even announce crossplay. Let's talk about crossplay for a second. I think For Honor crossplay would be really interesting. It'd be difficult, but it'd be interesting. Because think about it, if you're playing with people on Xbox and PS4 and you're on PC, they'll have to normalize the frame rates for all of the games. If I'm not mistaken, uh, on console, For Honor runs at 30 FPS. Whereas on PC, it runs on 60. Which, you know, it's a, For Honor's a fighting game, a very unique fighting game. It should probably run on 60 FPS, all platforms. And you know, that brings about the whole conversation, you know, mouse keyboard versus controller. It's a really interesting conversation to try and have. I think it could work though. And you know, if they announce crossplay, uh, it did be better for everyone. Queue times would go down. There'd be more players. Though if I recall correctly, it's kind of hard to get Sony on that boat, but maybe, or maybe it just might be crossplay between PC and Xbox, or maybe it might be all three. I don't know. Like I said, this video is all speculation and feel free to let me know what you think down in the comments section down below. What do you think they're going to do for For Honor's E3 2019? I, I, I think it's going to be something big. I mean, they wouldn't be at E3 if it wasn't something big. You know, I think last E3 it was Marching Fire. I, I think it's going to be awesome. But like I said, feel free to comment down below and tell me what you think they're going to do and tell me what you thought of the video. I'm always open to constructive criticism as it helps you make my videos better. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it because it helps my exposure just a tiny bit, I'm pretty sure, maybe. And if you really, really enjoyed, please consider hitting that subscribe button and maybe even the bell next to it. Pretty please. Wink wonk. And joining my Discord. Link in the description. You know you want to. I hope think maybe possibly anyway with all that being said thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye bye